is the Glass Cannon Network. be honest i had a topic ready to go but then before the recording we somehow started talking about parasites and then i got really terrified and then oh we're talking God. about like like inspirational love stories and then it was just emotional whiplash and i really don't know how to feel right now <laughs> parasites. that's it all a parasite is, is an inspirational love story from a different angle <laughs> who's done, yeah who's done who's yeah. done a story about that like you fall in love with the parasite inside you I've grown to love my cage. I mean, it's like, yes, I need you so bad. Like, I can't live without you. That's what a parasite is. Whoa, Skid. <laughs> You're dropping <laughs> bombs right now about love. Just saying. Yeah. I mean, it was, I was like, it got to the point where I was like, I'm never, I'm never interacting with nature ever again. But then I, I, I can't wait for like the Hallmark movie Tapeworm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 You see it curled Just, into a heart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't wait. You get it. It's I Christmas. Would... There's your movie. That's all you need. <laughs> you can get it from a fruitcake or a ham or something, and then you get your whole thing. Uh. <laughs> can you imagine getting a fruit, a, a parasite from a fruitcake? It's like that oh, yeah. one like fruitcake that's been gifted and regifted and regifted over the years, and someone actually decides to eat it. And it, it so, well, to people keep dropping it. It makes them so sick. It has like a hookworm in it or something like that. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm not eating anything ever, ever again either. <laughs> Good choice. Um, all right. Well, uh, oh, the original banter topic, which was ap apropos of nothing, I was going to ask you all if you had uh, a favorite <laughs> time jump in a work of television, movies, or fiction. And Seth, before you even say it, Battlestar Galactica is off the table. Yes. <sighs> As we've discussed before, it's wonderful. And I have very fond memories. But you can't take it. It's already taken. <sighs> it can be I just any finished season movie, right? two on my third rewatch. <laughs> 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 Why don't you let Seth take that one? And then the rest oh, of us have to pick something else. I'll think right, it's it. No, 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 it's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> right, anybody else have a favorite time jump and a work of fiction? Television um, movie winner. Do you have one, Alicia? I think I, th I, think I do, but it's, it's not a sci-fi film. And I don't really know if it, it is, it's considered a time jump or it's just a time sort of concept. It's the, the Butterfly Effect movie, the one with Ashley Kutcher. I was going to say that. You're lying. <laughs> Legitimately, I was going to say, it's not the most loved movie. Like, people look back on it a little like, eh, but I, when I first saw it, yeah, I thought it was, it was really amazing. Well I thought it was amazing. The way they the way they did it, the way they folded time together was actually really sort of accurate and how things can happen. It makes you think twice about wanting to redo things. And yeah. then when you sort of find out like what happened, it's like really kind of sad and creepy. Yeah. They did, they did a pretty good I mean, if you haven't seen that movie, like Sydney said, the reviews aren't really great. But the idea Is that Ashton of it, Kutcher? Is yeah. That? Yeah. 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 Okay. I think the idea of the movie is pretty pretty good. What they tried to do is good. I, just, I, don't I really want to rewatch it because it's very it is very fond in my memories. I remember because it came out in like two thousand something, and when I, I was in high school. I remember because everyone was gonna go see it, and then somebody saw it and was like, "Nah, uh, <laughs> no, really?" So I did. I never saw it. Uh, I remember I I started like middle school, and I was, I guess it really freaked me out. Like I was just yeah. like, "Whoa." Time is scary. It can go so wrong. I don't know. Really? I just, I thought it was crazy. <laughs> you can change one thing, like one little thing. Like, basically, I won't give away the movie just in case you have not seen it. I want you to see it and you can, we can talk about it later. I'll ask that quiz next time, et cetera. Um, but, you know, there are things like he got the ability to, to alter certain little things in his past. And he, so he tried to do it through this technique. I won't tell you how, but. It's just one little thing he would try to change and it would create major ripples throughout his life. Yeah. And so he'd go and try to change that and change this and change that, the whole concept. But they do it in a way that makes sense, you know? Well, that's where the term butterfly effect comes from is the Ray Bradbury short story, Sound of Thunder, uh -huh. 
The guy steps yeah. on a butterfly going back dinosaur hunting and changes the entire future of the earth. Right, yes, he steps, he steps on the butterfly. butterfly. I thought it was a butterfly bats its wings and it changes things. <laughs> That's a different thing. That's a different thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, actually, I don't know. That could be. I know that that's what happens in Sound of Thunder, but there is also the butterfly flapping its wings thing. I don't know to which oh, that okay. refers. I've always conflated them because I assume that like if you the, the point is if you were to kill step on the butterfly, then the butterfly can't flap its wings. And then like you oh, don't so think it's you think it's mm-hmm. insignificant, but actually has major ramifications. Yeah. Maybe I'm just conflating the two things. I love that story. <laughs> also, bad movie. With uh, <laughs> Uh, there was a movie of Sound of Thunder with Ben Kingsley in it, oh. and it was it was not was good at all. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's a hard yeah, ben concept. Kingsley, uh, it's a hard Ben Kingsley concept. just wanted to work. He <laughs> he, at a, he reached a certain point in his career, and he just wanted to work. He I don't think he really cared what he was doing. Ben, ben Kingsley doesn't want to be ever. fed. Ben Kingsley wants to work. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, but I love okay. that book. I love well that short story. I love that son book. Can I can I pick a different one? Because me and Alicia picked the same one. Yeah, please. I also, if no one has seen it, I think you all would enjoy it and the l- listeners as well. Um, there's an animated movie show and then there's a live action show that came out not too long ago, but it's called Erased. And it's originally a manga, I believe. Um, but it's an awesome story about like murder mystery and basically this kid in his like late 20s gains the ability to go back in time 18 years to try to solve the murder of his own mother. And it started like way in the past. There was like a serial murderer that he he finds out. And it's this like kind of expansive time travel thing. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's really well done. The animated show is great. And then the live action one is also good. I expected it to be a little bit like, eh. But um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I recommend it. Erased? You said? Erased. I'm Erased. I don't know the Japanese name, but... Yeah, erased. I should clarify. Really good sort of advice Mm. as far as movies and stuff. Something I like having these conversations pre-game, and then (laughs) this where Matthew says, "Speaking of erasing, (laughs) I would (laughs) never." Well, talk about a time jump. Don't jump ahead and skip all the other time jumps we're going to talk about. I was going to say I should clarify. I don't. You don't need need to have time travel involved in your time jump. I mean, like a narrative time jump that we are we are in one time and then we jump forward and you know, pass. Oh, we, and we I was gap thinking something. Okay. I, that. You're okay. I was thinking time travel. <laughs> so yes. my, mine would be. Uh, so I've actually I've got one and a half answers because one of them I can't exactly remember what the title or all the details was. It was <laughs> it was one of those Dracula shows. <laughs> Where I guess the ship goes down and you see the coffin sink and then he finally gets out of it. But when he walks ashore, it's like modern day London. Oh, because like, you're expecting it to be like Victorian because that's where it all was. But then the illusion yeah. is like he was down there for 100 years. But it's like I remember no other details about it, let alone what it was called. So I'm going to go with my backup choice, which was not Battlestar. Uh, the Expanse in the books where where the show ended, the books kept going fast forwarding 20 years and they're all silver haired aboard this spaceship. And it's just kind of like, yeah, this is all the crazy stuff that happened to them. And they're just, and now that they're all old, they have to save the, you know, save the galaxy again for three more books. And (laughs) except they're all, except they're all just old and and sick. (laughs) And it's like, it's like, well, let's just do this. Give me my Walker. We don't need walkers. We're in space. So, (laughs) Man, all right i, I hope it's, they bring that show back in 20 have years to wait 20 years yeah if they can bring it back in 20 years that's fine as long as i'm still alive i'll wait i'd be there skid you got one yeah uh I, i'll go with cloud atlas oh okay. Uh, that has multiple time jumps but i thought uh the i watched the movie first and uh, and then i read the book and i like you guys were saying with butterfly effect, just the idea of these like small decisions that can mm-hmm. extrapolate over time and have these unforeseen consequences down the road is that concept I thought was really cleverly explored yeah. in the story and really thoughtfully done. And um, yeah, I was, that's, I love the idea of that. And that was, that's, that's pretty cool. The book is, have you read the book? Have you since read the book? Yeah. Yeah, the book's amazing. The book yeah. is a little different book. It's like you not only are jumping time, but you're also jumping genre and narrative. And yeah, yeah, it's very, yeah. it's very cool. Um, I have a much smaller. I, I was when I 
thought about this. The one I was thinking of, um, just like I like really small time jumps that are enough to get you past, you know, like say un a year or under where you, it's enough that you've exited the story you were telling and major things could have happened. But you, so the one I think of a lot is the Mad Men season one to season two, um, mm. where you like, you like all the stuff with Peggy happens off screen. Mm. And, and for a minute they're like, okay, I guess we're just going to reset on this, like, and not, not think and not focus on what happened and just like focus on what, and then of course everything comes back, you know, comes home to roost. Um, I don't know why I want to talk about that, but um, <laughs> speaking of random time jumps. That was a good one, Maddie. <laughs> why don't we talk about what happened last week? Um, okay. So and to pull back the curtain, it's been a minute since we've recorded. So I, uh, if maybe it will be a recap for us all. So uh, last week, after crashing in this verdant valley on this unknown planet, the travelers took stock of their injuries. So tragically, the Warblers captain, Hiram Jax, whose voice I really enjoyed doing, don't know how accurate it was, uh, he died on impact, uh, as did the astrogator, Kaz Kazlasevich, who was kind of a dick. Uh, the rest of the crew, the BWAP pilot Trey and the Varger engineer Plurn, managed to survive, albeit with serious injuries. And miraculously, Willadine's asshole cat Scrap, <laughs> Pug's hopping lizard Buzz, and Swans Walston, who in my notes is as yet unnamed, uh, they oh, all managed right. I was to. I'm gonna think of a name. He's still unnamed. She's well, still unnamed. Had, He's still. You have eight years. Eight Just years to do point. it. Yeah, not eight years later, but I think of something right now. Yeah. <laughs> eight years later, yes. you go. I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> you, fi you're, I finally figured out who you are. <laughs> um, I had an uncle who literally never could think of a name for his dog. So he oh just he just called him U Dog. That was his name, U Dog. Oh my god. U Dog. That's kind of fun. Pick a name. Yeah, it was great. U Dog. Well, they all survived, but then in a moment that made me regret all of my choices as this game's referee, uh, Arthur's space salamander, Washu, uh, perished despite Pug's valiant attempts to save him. Valiant attempts right. slash euthanasia. Hard, <laughs> yeah. hard to distinguish. <laughs> this is tragic. Is he sitting there with a rock? <laughs> Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur's only psionic friend. Oh, uh, no. exactly. <laughs> well, after stabilizing their injuries, the travelers emerged from the wreckage of the Warbler and began to assess their situation. So Pug and Willadine scaled one of the rock faces. Uh, instantly, clutch purchase of a climbing kit, Willadine? Uh, yeah. It was, I was like, I was kind of like, Damn it. Uh, but you, know, <laughs> you got it. It's the classic um, situation of like, oh, use your gold to buy stuff. And then your players do. And you're like, oh, damn it. They sell climbing kits. Oh, no. <laughs> you can afford oh, that. Rats. Um, well, yeah, you did. You managed to climb a sheer rock wall and activate an emergency <laughs> beacon. And Arthur psionically scanned the surrounding area for life and detected a fair number of non-sentient life forms to the northeast. So you set out through the forest to the north, following a, the river through a pass that eventually led to the river source, this beautiful lake. And you notice a small herd of bipedal bird-like creatures out on an outcropping, which Dr. Swan Tenor stepped in and identified as cayenne, a flightless bird that can be used as both mounts and also food. Uh, Xenobiology being Dr. Tanner's specialty, she also knew they were thought to have originated on a planet in the Spinward Marches, which have since spread throughout charted space. Uh, and you guys were so taken with the cayenne that you hardly noticed the tall grass quivering, quivering all around you. And then seven giant centipede creatures erupted from the ground all around you and tried to eat you. Grabbies. Uh, but thanks to Willadine's leadership and also some key armor purchases, again, cursing the amount of money you had, uh, you were able to fend off and kill all the creatures. Uh, and then you, you saw even more burrowing, burrowing their way to you and uh, the largest centipede managed to recover and stand and come back for more. So you all retreated back to the ship. Uh, and you tried to decide what to do. And Trey, the pilot of the of the Warbler, who, a BWAP, always concerned with organization, knew you only had a few weeks, maybe a month of food left. And she showed you the late captain's side hustle, which was he traded in rare seeds, as in like seeds for plants. Uh, and Trey suggested planting them, but the rest of you just balked at the idea of staying very long on this planet at all. But then as night fell, Arthur, with Willadine and Swan's help, 
set about trying to ascertain via like manual astrogation calculations. No computer, no star chart, nothing. Just where this missed jump had taken you to. And he was successful. He rolled, Seth rolled incredibly well. And you, and Arthur discovered you were in the great, still in the great rift, but in a completely different subsector, Void 8. A subsector that, if you look at the map, is notable for having not one single star or planetary body within it. Or at least that's what the star charts show. And then just as Arthur worked up the nerve to tell his friends just how alone they were, we jumped ahead eight years and found that in that time, you guys had domesticated some of the cayenne, built homes, planted and farmed fields, grew your own food, and for all intents and purposes, had settled in the valley. But on this particular day, you saw not one but two ships crash land on the planet that apparently doesn't exist. One that seemed to be breaking up, and the other that seemed to manage some control of its landing. And maybe, maybe, for the first time in eight years, you thought you may not be alone. <gasps> Because at this point, Arthur should finally work up the nerve to tell them where they are. <laughs> <laughs> He's been waiting eight years. Guys, I have something. He's just so trying many... to pump himself up. <laughs> He's just I imagine been... we're all looking at the sky. Like, all of us are just staring up at the sky, and Arthur comes out. Guys, I have something to tell you. <laughs> it's like, like in game time, it's no time at all. It's just like the next thing that happens, but it's been eight years yeah. for these people. <laughs> we're just like, Arthur, Lying. the ships, and then you're like, ne never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Nothing to tell you. <laughs> it's not important. Sorry. Not important. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should address the elephant in the room, which is that eight years have passed. Are you guys pissed? Do you feel railroaded? Did I? I want to make space not for the airing of yeah, grievances. I don't. Okay, no, good. I, I good. certainly don't. Tell me more about why you like my choices. <laughs> this is this is what the adventure is. This is like it's like you know. A shipwreck, anything like you know. This is there's a there's a story tradition of this kind of of uh, choice in a, a t tabletop adventures, and uh, this is a great. This is great. I, I'm thrilled. I'm I'm very excited to continue. I imagine that Skid's thoughts are all your own, all everyone else's. You're brainwashed, I Skid. <laughs> I, I I I loved it because it was like, well, I didn't prepare for any of these, so. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Arthur is a little bit of a blank slate as skills go, so adaptable to any sir, any any narrative situation. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if I want to talk about my narrative situation just yet because I, I don't know if you want to talk about like what we did, what we've decided to do, like as far as our, being a food person or a safety person. Or, I you can't. Know what I mean? yeah. but, do you want me oh, to? I'll just go into it then. Okay. All right. Well, I, well, Sydney, do you have? Do you, are you angry at me? Are you mad? Do we need to talk about this? No. I will say I feel like I had a real Freaky Friday Jamie Lee Curtis moment where like I'm calculating my age and doing all my things, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like the crypt keeper. <laughs> I'm just like the crypt keeper. <laughs> Sydney, that was a really good movie, by the way. It good was. Remakes. <laughs> Sydney, I swear to God, if you tell me your if your character is like my age and that you feel like the crypt keeper, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> no, oh no, it's gonna be my age. <laughs> no, no, she's age. not. She, she's not that old. Um, but it is. It's funny because you go in with an idea, and when we started, she was such like a bright, young, like fresh off her home planet. She's been yeah. gone for so long, for so and you, long. And you had a you and Willadeen had a romantic. I had thing an, of some an, sort. An engaged question mark mint um, but yeah that like you said Elisa with the character development I'm like having to figure out who she is now you know like she could be a whole different person yeah because it's yeah. eight years eight and, years eight and years. They, they, they they maybe spend the rest of their life here they don't know I mean after eight years go by you're like these are the people I'm stuck with forever I think after five years she probably was like yep this is it. Like we're not. No one's coming for us. Like, and everyone so they, assumes that you're dead. Someone is. Everyone's got to assume that you're just dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe they were trying to get off the planet. I mean, you know, get the ship back up and going for like the first couple years. And then they decided, yeah, was, are we going to eat the Kia and are we going to keep them <laughs> with, with sticks and vines? I patched the hole, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's Gilligan's Island. It's just it's like it's, yeah. it's an Adobe hole. <laughs> <laughs> Classic spacefaring material. 
Once it takes off, the clay will fire and we'll be safe. We'll be safe <laughs> once the atmosphere. The atmosphere will act like a kiln. And... <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys crack me up. <laughs> you guys. You guys. Well, let's talk. Oh, so what we did, so uh, I emailed you after last episode and I sent along a custom career for you all, Castaway. Uh, and there were three assignments available, so food, so responsible for the procurement and preparation, preservation of food and all other, you know, eating related activities. Safety, you know, both security and also protection from weather and medical conditions, so the medic kind of got folded under that heading too. And also shelter, so, you know, did, what were you responsible for building and maintaining any kind of structure or shelters? Uh, you would need uh, and then I had you roll two terms in that in that custom c career and To see what would happen and then however we saved the events for the episode So we'll go I think figured we'll go around we'll do it We'll do each of your events for the past eight years and then I'll update you on the NPCs and We'll figure out what you've all been up to because I, I left it really open I didn't want you to feel like you had to be living in the ship or if you built stuff, yeah. you know, this is this is all up to you um, so uh, it's a, why don't we start, why don't, Sydney? Why don't we start with, or Lisa? You had some thoughts. Why don't we start with you? You, you were going to tell me what what's been going on with Swan in the past eight years. The past eight years. Okay, so when we got your paperwork, I was extremely confused, but then I remembered. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> we're stuck on a on a, a place where we can't get more ammunition. We can't get more guns unless we made them ourselves. So it's not like there's there's a there's a lot of limitations so then it made sense why we have this whole new stuff to roll on because we can't we're learning what we're learning while we're here and that's it so swan i, I remember mentioned this last episode or the episode before that she's half valani which is a type of human i have since find out, found out that this particular species of human is extremely sensitive to certain food items so that would make sense for swan to go into food food, food procurement because having traveled with her parents extensively, um, thinking about the time when they were in Star's End where they lost Swan's mother, they traveled a lot. So she's used to having to either test food or when they go to different space stations looking for the little symbol on the package that says that this food is safe to be eaten. Or at least going to different places and knowing how to somewhat test the DNA of food proteins to see if it's safe to eat. I guess, I don't know if it kills Villani or if it just makes him really sick, like lactose intolerance. I don't know. I really, They really don't specify that in any of the, the Traveler Wiki stuff. So I just assume it makes you really, really sick. So Alicia, I, I love this. We were just talking about, before we started Matthew Mentor, we were talking about parasites and how like you can get horrible, then this is real, like you can get horrible parasites this is why I'm freaked out. <laughs> accidentally. But I love this too, because your character is like, what an amazing thing, though. You're like, hey, guys, we cannot eat these berries. You know, like, you just know you have this, like, knowledge. That's yeah, really cool. You've had to, you've had to yeah. learn it so much for yourself. Yeah. You become an expert. That's like what growing up, like, my diet was really, really limited. And so you, yeah. you get to know, like, all this stuff. You get to know a lot about food. Sniffy, just, like, just like sniffing control. stuff. Yeah, you're like, this stuff. is spoiled. Yeah. This is bad. And knowing, oh, it, yeah. It, except it's, it's, for, so like, it sort of works. the, the <laughs> hell that would be like, what sort of seeds do we have? Uh, we've got tons of peanuts that we can plant, <laughs> and we got all this uh, this uh, this wheat. So and, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. peanuts it's like, and grain. That's yeah. it. Refined yeah, sugar. Like, uh, is, there, is there any is there anything else that's in there? And it's like <laughs> your least favorite food on earth is the only one you're not allergic to. Like, uh, okay, well, it looks like it's a broccoli world for me. <laughs> uh, not just broccoli, like alien broccoli. So it may or may uh, not be, you may even be, not even be oh, adjusted. Oh, oh, it's all weird and gross. It's, ew, we hate alien broccoli. Yeah. But that's that the thing too, is like, are you forced to eat the food that's available to you? And what impact does that have on your body over the course of eight years? Yeah, do you, that's right. Do you become, do you kind of get inured to it, or like, does it make you sicker? Yeah. Well, let's. Um, you, why don't we like find that's out? You, that's how you get like science pharmaceuticals because you're making antihistamines for yourself constantly. Yeah. You're just, yeah. just pop a Zyrtec on this planet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like herbal Zyrtec. <laughs> herbal Zyrtec. <laughs> Is herbal Zyrtec just like smothering yourself in pollen and trying to do like exposure <laughs> therapy? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, well, let's let's find out what might have happened specifically. So, at least you made your survival rolls, right, for for both terms. Yeah, I made both survival rolls, so that that was that was good. My dice was actually being nice to me. All so, right. um, okay. So give me give me two D. We'll roll your first event. We'll see what happened happened the first four years. This, let me tell you something. I always go into this game with like a low level stress because I know that something's about to go down. <laughs> so here I am stuff. right now. Okay. Seven. Seven. Seven is a life event. So I also Ooh, have, cu- I've custom customized the life events to an extent. So give me another 2D roll. Okay. You have it hidden somewhere in your little place over there. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the next page of the PDF I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Five. Five. Oh, okay. Improved relationship. Ooh. A romantic relationship involving you deepens, possibly leading to marriage or some other emotional commitment gain an ally. Oh. Wow. I gain an ally? An ally. And you only have so many choices here. So you have the other, <laughs> <laughs> the other three characters or Plurn or Trey. Oh. So it has, okay, so it can't be like some random thing we find on the planet. It has to be someone in a. You our... could get married to one of the birds, I guess. This real deep. Yeah, I guess you could. Fi- you could feel deep. I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but yeah. I well, really, really wanted yeah. to. This is like Tom <laughs> Hanks and Castaway. Lisey's walking around with her volleyball everywhere. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All, I, all right, yes. Inanimate <laughs> objects are <laughs> available to you as a choice. Ah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Why did? Okay. Why doesn't she develop like a friendship? The, did the blob die? Nope, Trey is alive. Trey survived. Okay, that's right. His name is Trey. I have his, just his guap here. Wh- why doesn't she have like, um, I don't want to say it's a real, real romantic relationship, but it becomes a deep friendship because guap kind of eat disgusting things, right? Like uh, flies and insects, I think. I, I think guap eat disgusting things. Let me uh, consult Aliens of Charred Space Volume 3 to get you an actual answer for that, but go on. Yeah, let me Google. Do guap eat gross stuff? <laughs> Ew, like disgusting. Bugs, you know, like bugs. they eat. Black so. flies and stuff, so maybe they like look in- like geckos. So yeah. maybe that would one would assume. I know. Well, it does actually add lead that idea of like, because it's so proper, but also its tongue coming out just licking its eye, like yeah, <laughs> like a gecko. Like. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Was it was it Trey really smart? Trey was really smart. Waps yeah. are okay. are very concerned with organization. So actually, if you took Trey, I will like the curtain. Trey also took the food. Assignment. So maybe oh. you were working together. That's and it. Yeah, being you out. Get it off. Yes, and testing. I mean, we we did food testing together. Um, yeah. I, I I wasn't. I I've actually tried his. Like I've tried his black fly casserole. It was disgusting. <laughs> but she's willing to be adventurous. You know, he tries. He he. May, maybe he's sort of a gourmand, and he tries to make the best of the stuff that he. I like to think of his food very much, Bwap food is very much like um, Klingon food. Just like not appetizing, but they're trying to- Very enriching. Trey is female, by the way. Uh, oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, I ha- I mean, I will get back to you on an answer for what Bwap, uh, Bwap diet is actually traditionally like later. But all right, so you you forge a relationship with Trey. Um, all right, let's keep going. What's that? We're besties. Your besties. Okay. Uh, Skid, let's go to let's go to you next. What's been going on with Pug? Has what what assignment did Pug choose? Uh, Pug did what with safety? Safety, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he Makes sense. was as a soldier. Like I think that he took that on himself to kind of protect the fledgling colony here. All right, um, and you did you you made your survivor rolls? I think you said right. Uh, I did. Yeah, those were pretty. They're endurance rolls, so those were pretty easy for for uh, pug. For, for old pug. All right. Yeah. Well, let's do your first event. Roll. Okay. G- give me a give me two D a two D roll. Uh, three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a, unusual for based on what you've just said, but I imagine everyone pitched in. In your attempts to grow food. You develop an innovative innovative hybrid plant, which is both more sustainable and richer in protein and other nutrients. Gain oh. endurance plus one. Oh, awesome. Really? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. That's great That's because you. I aged. I made. I I made my first aging roll, but the second one I lost two physical points of phys- two points of physical attributes. Yeah. And one of them was from endurance. And now I get that back. You get it back. All right. Okay. Let's keep. I will do all your first terms, and then we'll come back and do your second terms. Um, Sydney, what's Willa Dean? How, how do how how's Willa Dean been faring? Willa Dean has been good. I passed metagame wise. I passed my survival roles, um, and she's been really focused on working out. Uh, she's gained stuff like in survival, uh, in leadership, and I think she's kind of been holding it down still as the captain, but in a different form. Um, she lets everybody kind of do their thing so they can maintain this sort of commune they have going on, but. <laughs> When a storm comes or something, she's like yelling out the orders and she's still trying to to keep a semblance of a crew. Yes, I should. uh, I did tell you and I'll 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 give those bullet points now. I did give you a few kind of givens about the planet. So uh, I will read them now and then we'll go back to you. So you've cultivated multiple crops, including a small field of something from the seed stores and the manure on board. Uh, You cultivated a small group of cayenne. Uh, The planet uh, has an annual storm season of these with these heavy rains, thunderstorms, and electrical storms. It's maybe what keeps everything so burdened. So where we are right now, you're about at harvest time, uh, so which is right on the cusp of the up, upcoming storm season. Uh, and in those eight years, you've never encountered another sentient being or life is, form on the planet. And by eight years, at this point, we're about to go wicker man. So we're trying to figure out who to stick <laughs> to the giant. Oh. <laughs> who, do we put, oh. who do we put in the rattan figure? <laughs> this is science. <laughs> not the bees. Not the bees. No. Please. <laughs> um, okay, Sydney. So give me a give me a two D for your event. Okay. Let's go, Willie Dean. That's a uh, six. Oh okay. well. <laughs> All right. You hit your limit with the group and move oh. away to live separately from the settlement, though not too Whoa. far. Reduce Whoa. your social standing by one and roll what? either. Survival, broker, or gun combat. If you succeed, gain one of strength plus one, dex plus one, or endurance plus one, plus a level in any skill of your choice. Wow. If you fail, reduce your endurance by one. So maybe you tried to keep it together, but at a certain point you just couldn't and you snapped and you had to go be, you had to go like, (laughs) you had to go like throw it out in the woods. Just went full Kaczynski. (laughs) Well, I was thinking, I was thinking uh, Ben Stiller from Tropic Thunder with the, Oh, with the panda. panda bear. <laughs> oh, so I went insane. I just went insane. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. You tell me. Uh, <laughs> it's up to you. Kaczynski or Stiller, that's your choice. <laughs> um, or him, okay. or Thoreau. Thoreau is also an option. Or Thoreau. Sure. Huh. Want to go literary? Sure. It's yeah, it's just it's just a little, you know, a simple line between them. They're very close. I think I think maybe <laughs> I think maybe she kind of like lied to the group and I think she she did reach her limit but she's like too proud to even tell them that like she was embarrassed by her own mental fatigue about everything and I think she was like I'm gonna go off and you know round up some what are they called Cain? Cain? Cayenne. Cayenne from uh, this other area that we know that they're, they're it's far it's whatever and then she just didn't come back for a while and yeah all right um roll so you can either roll survival broker or gun combat i'm gonna roll survival because i have a two in survival okay great so uh, sorry i'm rolling then i add two to it so you're gonna add two for your for your skill and then whatever relevant characteristic you want to say could be endurance could be intellect if you're saying or use your edu- or education saying you're using you know your skills you learned in the navy in the navy could to I, survive could i use my strength sure or why why would you use your strength to survive i think because willa dean is she was so focused on <laughs> her her strength like that's always her strength has always been her strength um so i think <laughs> she when she left she was like very much reckless like she was like i was gonna climb this thing like i was gonna climb this thing to avoid the worms she just went at it with like a very it was a smart approach but she just did it to prove it to herself she was like i just need to like get to the top of this area and be alone from everybody else so she ended up like climbing uh, like another rock face basically she climbed this like mountainous area 
maybe you're <laughs> <just kidding. laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe yeah, your yeah. your your separate camp is up in the mountains. Yeah, like up, fur, yeah. up further in the mountains. Yeah, like an insane hermit with a panda on her head. <laughs> kind of like that. It's a woman cave. All right. I was I was thinking commando. Where you see Schwarzenegger walking with like a log that's like. I don't know, like a hundred feet long or something. It's like his big intro because he's all flexed. So it's like that's that's Sid right now. Yeah, you see yeah, Logan carrying yeah. a tree, like a fell yeah. tree. It's just like, just like, um, so I rolled, I rolled a six plus two plus my one for strength, so nine. Okay, so you succeed. So you can either gain one of strength plus one, dex plus one, or endurance plus one. I'll do endurance plus one because my endurance is a zero. Okay. <laughs> oh no. And then uh, level on any skill of your choice. Ah. That's a great deal. I'm going to yeah. add another to Jack of All Trades, which I got in our castaway session. Um, and I'm going to get, now I have one in Jack of All Trades. That makes sense. You're living on yeah, your own. You have hermit. to be able to do everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. All right. So Willadine became a hermit. Uh, Seth, how did, what's Arthur been up to? Well, uh, Arthur's background was he did construction originally. Right. Uh, and so I figured he would do shelter because this is like like going back to his roots uh, so he did the, the shelter and he somehow ended up getting strength plus one so evidently uh, since, since, since Sid left I had to carry all the dang trees to build all the shelters <laughs> <laughs> so blame me uh, but, so I ended up I ended up surviving it so all right, let's was, see what happens since, since endurance is one of my best skills. So it's like, oh yeah, he's got this. So let's see. Four. Four. You're forced to adapt to your new situation. Gain one level of jack of all trades, survival, navigation, or mechanic. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with mechanic just because that was mistake he's probably having to build stuff like that so he's probably building like uh, watering pumps and that sort of deals like the old screw method so he he went with mechanic yeah that's super useful i don't and i don't think anyone else has mechanic i don't mine's mine's now a two plurin does have mechanic um okay well, okay, and that's, I mean, I guess I should ask you, like, do you think you're all, Sydney aside, because Willow Dean is living up in the mountains by herself, but <laughs> do you think you're living on the ship, or have you, like, built structures out on the, what do you think? Uh, I think, I, th- I, I think that we've probably scavenged the ship to build shelters. That's, like, yeah. Yeah. The shell itself, but then also other, maybe the little laboratory or, you know what I mean? Little if other place structures, a couple d- of structures. D- depending on the condition of the ship, like, you know, it's not like we can just like be burning our, our lamps and our candles inside the ship. I mean, because it's a, like, it's, 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 <laughs> you know, it would get smoky and gross. So it probably is like we store stuff in there. We, we use it for things. Finally, we're yeah. punching holes in staterooms to get some air circulation because we're like, we'll stay in the ship. And it's like, that's just so muggy and stale in here. <laughs> so we probably have built like homes. And yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah. Also, modified like, it this suffered, ship Hulk. It went through a crash. So, like, I don't think we would ever really be confident that it wouldn't, like, you'd be in a room, uh, like a cabin that would just collapse. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. Not really knowing what kind of structural damage like happened. Yeah. So I mean, I think it was also a ship designed it. to exist in space. It never really was supposed to exist in, a, in atmosphere right. with with you know. So yeah, right. okay, great. Yeah. Um, I probably have like a, a water sort of pump like, windmill made of blades out of hull yeah. sections. Oh cool. Yeah, I think like the ship is sort of like a, like a centerpiece of our settlement, but we're mm-hmm. just sort of like pulling yeah. like a like a like blocks of stone off an old Roman wall. You know, we're just like mm-hmm. kind of using it to build our own things. Yeah. I'm taking notes. Ma- windmill made of blades. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, but, but I mean, this is a planet that like has a storm season. And so we can assume like with the flora and fauna that is able to survive out there, maybe we see that it can survive. And so we build things out of the, I don't know, trees or whatever sure. over there because they're strong enough to withstand this planet's you know, I don't know yeah. weather, so we can build things out of it, cut it down and build things out of it. You build yourself like a house, and then put use the ship to make a like a 
a metal roof on it. To, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's really hodgepodge, but we did our best. The ears. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's real quick run through the events of uh, the NPCs. So, uh, Plurn did survive both uh, her both her terms. So let's let's roll. Uh, I'm being attacked by a bug. Okay, uh, you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so for her first event, uh, she rolled a a six as well. So she also moved away from the group. Oh, oh my no. god! We're oh, fractured. No. Lord of the did she, Flies. Did she like no. climb up the same mountain? Then I was like, come on. <laughs> I have to pick a whole new mountain now. This is my mountain. This is my spot. I don't like uh, was you're standing on your mountain. You threw a stick off of it because you were frustrated. And like the next day, she came up with a stick in her mouth. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Bad girl. <laughs> bad, bad. I was compelled bad to bring girl. this back to you. Down. Get down the mountain. Down. Down the mountain. <laughs> down. Alright, let's do Marley. Marley Krog, who was your fellow crew member on the space station. The, oh my uh, god, I forgot about Marley. The janitor. Yeah, you always forget about Marley, don't you? Scruffy. Yeah, it's just very scruffy. <laughs> okay. Marley sets upon training the Cayenne for riding. After fashioning a crude saddle instead of reins, he spends months working with the animals and bonds with one particular cayenne, succeeding to teach it to serve as a mount. He gains one level of animals handling and he gains the cayenne mount as an ally. Oh, okay. okay. Cool. So Marley how, may be a little more memorable now, hopefully. How this went down is we've been there for like three years and we look over and he's doing trick riding on one of these things like, <laughs> and everybody's like jaw drop, but instead of like, that was amazing, like, who the hell is that? <laughs> Have you seen that guy? Um, okay. We're and so then... mean. We're like so <laughs> unbelievably mean. Okay, so then Trey actually failed her her survival role for her first term. So maybe one of she. Maybe I I always I now I this new possibly Bessie's relationship she has with Swan is interesting because I, I when I rolled that for Trey I thought oh no she like. She got way in her head about the organization and went and just got a and it got really intense and was not able to kind of like she had a little bit of a break and you guys had to take care of her. But maybe her bestie Swan is the one yeah. who cares for her and makes sure she gets fed and she's she's all healthy. All right, um, well, let's go one more round on events for the second four years. I okay. I, I will confess like one of the reasons I wanted to do this is just because I love the character creation mechanic so much and I didn't <laughs> want to use it in an interesting. <laughs> And it, I want to do it more. Uh, I'll, and like you guys come up with such fun ideas. So uh, okay, let's go again. Let's do the same order. So Swan, did you you made your survival roll for the second four years? So give me another two D. Okay. Oh boy. Ten. Okay. Another. This makes this actually makes sense. Another member of the group finds themselves in mortal danger, and you have the opportunity to risk your life to save them. If you take the risk, roll 2D. On a seven or less, roll on the injury table. On an eight plus, gain an ally and an extra roll on the personal development table. Oh. Is it me? My risk. It Who's the person? Be, it might be Trey. Oh, it could be Trey. Oh, then it makes sense. It's Trey. You know. And she's Ooh. learning to speak WAP, so. Oh yeah, I, I have an update oh. for you on the diet. WAPs are omnivorous. Uh, their diet consists primarily of vegetable matter with a small amount of protein such as fish, insects, and amphibians. There you go. Uh, and they did not they did not have sauces before they made contact with other species. But uh, once they did encounter aliens that brought sauces to the world, the WAPs went whole hog into the sauces. <laughs> into sauces. <laughs> it's the barbecue sauce, let me tell you. Okay, and you know, I mean, the whole group has really gotten into that groat satay that, that uh, <laughs> what that uh, Trey has been able to bring to the table, so she does risk her life. So I'm risk her life. All right, give me a two D roll. Seven. Fail. Roll on the. So you try to save sit to, to save Trey, but you don't. Uh, so give me a roll on the injury table. So one D. Oh my god! And I had to figure out what happened. How did I try to save her? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how Six. badly you're hurt. Oh, okay. Lightly injured, no permanent effect. Oh. Oh, great. Okay, so maybe she gets a cool scar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, that's a scar is a thing. So you 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 you're quickly you heal quickly. Maybe you just like pull a muscle. 
Okay, that's good. Yeah, she pulls a muscle. Maybe, I'm trying to figure out what injury does, um, I mean, what happened to Trey? Like, does she eat something that doesn't, maybe doesn't disagree with her on the planet? Maybe <laughs> she, yeah, maybe, that, you know, because of the food thing, the sort of sensitivity thing that she shares with Trey, maybe, maybe she thought that she could just eat whatever she wanted. So she found this plant that she thought looked tasty and decided to make something and it made her gravely ill. And Swan knew there was an antidote out there. So she went out in the forest and maybe there was one of those plant life creatures and she tried to like kill it to like use an antidote or something, but it ended up being actually sentient. Cause Swan is not great with that. <laughs> oh yeah, my she's God. Had a, she's had a bad track record on identifying. So maybe there's a plant like alien and it like attacked her or something. She, she ran away from it, so it's still living in the forest somewhere. Is that the poison ivy monster? <laughs> the little oh, the worst, that's the, the worst one. Oh, oh no, no. a sap block. I was gonna go with ivy monster. I was gonna go with Trey was just walking near the mountain and a stick just came out of nowhere and hit her in the head. <laughs> yeah. You guys see Swan running out of the forest like you guys there's something living in there. But it's still in there. And it's a plant, it's an alien that looks like a plant. Alright. So okay. <laughs> you nearly killed Trey. Maybe that puts a strain on your relationship in the second four years. Um, it might contribute to what what Trey's got going on. Um, all right, Skid, what happens to Pug in the second the second four years? The first four years went pretty well for Pug. Like he's uh, he's he, he he adapted. He's surviving. He's uh, doing his thing. Yeah, I think at some point, Willa Dean left us. And so I think like we all had to sort of pick up the slack that she represented. And also, who else left? Uh, Trey. Trey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they they both they both did, left the. the or or no, did Plurn? Plurn left. Trey is there. Plurn left. Oh wait. Um, Sorry, Skid. I don't want to interrupt you. I just glanced at the miss because uh, Trey failed her survival role on the second eight years too. And the mishap is a relationship turns sour, gain a rival. Oh, oh, okay. So you right. and Trey were so close, and then after this incident, now you don't speak, maybe? Oh, Or my she doesn't gosh. speak to you? Trey it, and Swan are enemies? Rivals. Rivals? Rivals. Yeah. All right, that's sorry, why you good. left. That's why you both, you both <laughs> left. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> sorry, Skid, I interrupted you. I apologize. Right, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so I think, so anyway, he got the, um, his endurance went up one. Great. Uh, yep. in this term just like this the uh, i think it's just it's like hauling i think he's just like doing a lot of like just a lot of physical labor when I mean, you're running a farm like it's 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 an, yeah. or hunting and it's just a lot of yeah I mean, a hunting, lot of work yeah just a lot of like stuff in the outdoors but i think this is probably uh i think this is something brand new for him because like he grew up on a like a shipbreaker world and like he's sort of always been surrounded by either like a decaying industry or uh or at war and this is the first time where he's been like outside in this sort of really kind of pastoral environment and you know turning his beating his swords into plowshares you know this is i think he probably uh has had a positive impact on his psyche I would guess. All right, go ahead and roll for an event, and let's see. Let's see if that bears let's see. fruit. Let's see. <laughs> uh, two. Oh no! Disaster! Bad, right? Yeah, Disaster! Bad. Roll on the mishap table. Oh gosh. Well, all right, uh, so one D. That that might not. All of what you said might be true. You just might have gotten hurt while doing it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, that's a two. Two is injured. Roll on the injury table. Okay. Damn plant monster again. I don't know. I don't like <laughs> maybe it's sky a monster though. Maybe it's just a thing that lives there, but all I know is that it, it did not like the fact that I was trying to harvest it. Looks so like a nineteen sixty Star Trek monster. It's all rubber. <laughs> <laughs> and I pulled a muscle running from it. <laughs> oh my god. Is this it a two this is a D sixty six, is that what it is? Injury uh, no, it's just a one D. One D. Six. Lightly injured, no permanent effect. 
possible. Oh, there you go. So maybe like, I think that's true. I mean, I love that story for, for Pug that like after being this soldier who could just not advance and just being sent to war after war after war, he finally find it like in this, out of this disaster, he finds some sense of, some sense of peace uh, yeah. and purpose in a way. You know, it's like, yeah. um, and you like it here and like, you like it, you like it, you like, you have your friends, you have your settlement, you have your work and you don't have to kill anyone. You know, it's, it's, yeah. I think it's it's a double-edged sword because he also like he really wanted to get back to his family. Yeah. To do that, but but uh but he has I think he's I think he's making the best of it and like he's definitely seeing the good in in the situation. All right. Um Okay, okay, Willa Dean, let's see if you come back. Did you you made your survivor role for the second term? I think you yeah, told yeah, me. Yeah. All right, let's see if you come back to the group in the second four back, years. Willa Dean, come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how sometimes it lines up so perfectly. Like, it makes sense. It just, yeah. it works. A lot of but... pressure. A lot of pressure. Okay, you know? so that, whoa. Until you get to mine. That's a nine. <laughs> you set upon training the Cayenne for riding. You also, you fashion a crude saddle. So maybe you don't come back. You stay up there. You find a Cayenne. Uh, you bond with one particular Cayenne and, and succeed in teaching it to serve as a mount. You wow. gain you gain one level of animals handling and you gain your mount as an ally. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, so I think yeah. I think oh, what she, happened so she has two pets and I don't have a salamander. That's that's, that's <laughs> oh, great. No. Yeah, at you least you got a salamander. You can of. have scrap. Fair. You can have no. scrap. <laughs> Dogs and cats living together. No. Oh, that's you're right. Necessary. You're right. Mm. I think that's so perfect. I think like after, you know, a few months of because what did it say? She lived on her own for a few months? Uh yeah, what was it? Uh was it rolled? years or months? Probably a term is four years. So however long into yeah. that you left. I didn't I didn't specify. So it might have been after a couple of years you left and you're yeah. like, I'm not coming back. Mm. So maybe it's like been a year, been two years, uh, and she's up in her like hermit hole and she's got her makeshift shelter and she's a little bit crazy. Like, you know, she talks to herself a little bit and she's talking, her hair talking crazy. about, yeah, <laughs> hair's fucked up. Science. And she's talking about her ex fiance uh, and she's happy that she's not going to be with him. And she like pretends he's there and she says all the things that she was going to say to him, you know? And she like every day, it's like 50 first dates, like every day she's like, what's his name? I don't even, I don't even know if I made him a name. Timothy, I just don't know if I could do it. I just don't know if we're right for each other. And like the next day she's like, Timothy, I have something to tell you. I have something that I want to get down. I want to get it off my chest. And uh, she goes on this long walk uh, to clear her head. And she finds a cayenne, and I think it just, over the next year, she, like, befriends this cayenne out of a need for fucking interaction. Like, she hasn't, she feels like she's going crazy. And she's like, Willa Dean, stop talking to yourself. Stop talking to yourself. And then she kind of just bumps into this animal, um, and she develops a friendship. And then after that time, she rides it back into camp, <laughs> leading the other cayenne as if she was gone for no time at all, as if she just went and got the cayenne that she mentioned four years ago and is now back. <laughs> Wow. Did you get for four years? It four, yeah, like about four, four years. years. So you did I mean, we back. could also we could also save that if you want. We could save like you could save it for. I imagine you guys are gonna get together. Yeah, I, I mean, if we were writing this as a show, I would say like when this happens, you're still not here. Yeah, like this is an event that has to like pull us back. Together. This is what brings yeah. you back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we'll wait on that. But she's she's making her way across this planet okay. with the Cayenne, expecting to come back to camp as this eighth term is ending. Yeah. yeah, come back to the five and dime, will it Dean, will it Dean? <laughs> um, okay, amazing. Um, all right, Seth, let's do, let's see what happens with Arthur in the in the next four years. I'll be, I'll, I, will you roll and then I'll tell you what I thought was going to happen based on the, but then the dice had other things to say. Well, uh, so so my skill that I got during this, which I was like, this is going to be useless, uh, was carouse. So I figure since we've got like. Yeah, you know, Willie and Plurred both said they were going to go get cigarettes, and then they were gone for four or eight years at, at all this. And the initial surviving part is done. Uh, since Fargar are very social animals, he is actually probably trying to make more of a family unit. So he's probably got a still going on and is mm -hmm. trying to have group things, mm -hmm. uh, possibly making like a meat pie and trying to, you know, 
leave it out at the edge of territory because yeah, she's the only <laughs> female Varger on this freaking planet, <laughs> man. Um, <laughs> but so, so he's trying to like Setting up build a community. Snakes. She's a straight dog. <laughs> 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 and I got a like, 11. Okay. The storm season wreaks havoc on the settlement, damaging your, the shelters and flooding your crops. A My still! <laughs> and, <Arthur. laughs> and threatens to ruin your food stores. The entire party reduces their endurance by one, unless you make a daring attempt to save the supplies. Oh We've no! Gotta make a daring attempt to save the supply. God damn it! Oh, no. So we're well, too hero. busy working on the festival to worry about the crops. And now this is cost us. <laughs> so you can roll your choice of athletics, dexterity, or strength. And I'll tell you. And I'll, uh, each one has a different uh, a different uh, target value. So if you succeed, you save everyone. If you fail, bad things happen. Okay, so I don't know my targets until I, I announce. I'm going to go with strength because I now have a plus one because I got stronger lifting all that stuff the first turn. So as the as the raids come in and start sweeping away all our crops, that that's the rips off the shirt just, uh, and just charges <laughs> off. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> all right. Yep. All the fur bursts forth and full animal glory. All right. Uh, un- underneath this, I promise there are huge pectoral muscles. Yeah, no, you can't see them. Oh, you can't see them, but they swear they're there. <laughs> promise. Eight, eight rows of them. Yeah. All right. Give me that strength roll. <laughs> Nine. Arthur, you succeed in saving yes. the settlement. Yay! That's huge. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, you succeed. And I want to see what the effect of that is on Plurn, because sh- we'll see what happened. Let's see what her event is. <laughs> okay. Um, she got a life event. So, I don't know, Seth. I'm not gonna, this might still be in the cards. Well, we'll see. All right, here well, we go. I need her to get the romantic one, because I'm not asking her out. You're too shy. <laughs> You're, don't you have like three kids? I don't know. <laughs> All right. I rolled. <laughs> okay. I think we can make this work. It was not the new relationship one. It was a 10. Good fortune. Something good happens to you. Have a. You, in the example from the book is you come into money unexpectedly. I don't think that's happening here. Have a lifelong dream come true. You find true. a bunch of gold. You don't find a bunch of gold. Uh, <laughs> you craft oh, the arrowheads. Life. So the actual mechanical effect of this in the book is game DM plus two to anyone benefit roll. So I'll save that. I'll note that on player's sheet. But let's say after four years, after a few years out in the wilderness by herself, she sees your heroic, heroic efforts and is uh, impressed by your fur covered possible pectorals and oh, yeah. comes, comes back to the camp. She sees oh, me nice. do the little dog spin to get the water off, but it all goes in slow motion with <laughs> lens flare oh off each drop. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> um, Marley, oh, so let me just, I got, uh, Trey failed. We just did Plurin. All right, let me do Marley's, uh, Marley's event. Okay. Three. Oh. So in your attempts to grow food, he got the same one uh, Pug did. He, uh, he made an innovative hybrid plant and uh, he gains endurance plus one, which honestly he's going to need. Um, okay, Marley, stat block is up here. Okay. Uh, just, just steps out, scruffy, like I made a new plant, and just fades back into the shadows. <laughs> right, he rides off into the sunset on his, on his, his cayenne pal. <laughs> Okay. Who is um, that guy? <laughs> so let's zoom back to the moment we left off last last episode. Thank you all for doing that, by the way. It's always delightful to me. Like, always no, delightful. Awesome. <laughs> I love that stuff. Every game should have stuff like that. Yes. A system yeah. like that. It's More great. tables. More tables. More tables. Yeah. More tables. Um, tables. Okay. So, yeah. It's eight years have passed. You had no contact with any other sentient life. But now, on this day, right during the harvest season, right before the storm season, not one, but two ships have crashed on this planet. 
So where do you, where do you think each of you is when you see, like where do you I, we, I kind of vaguely mentioned that you all look up but where are you when you see when you hear the boom of the ship of the ships coming you know breaking the sonic barrier and coming in um, I'm back I'm back right No you're still oh. up in the mountains Okay <laughs> No Sydney up- you can't come back <laughs> I'm up in the mountains <laughs> I see the ships first <laughs> Yes all right you see the ships first And I yell to no one and I yell to no one Ships! Sure. Ships! <laughs> Ships! Like, you know, like the person on the beach. She's just like, hey! Hey! And just no one is around me. <laughs> and no one can hear me. <laughs> the bird. No, yeah, my cayenne. You're, you're uh, what's your cayenne's mm-hmm. name, by the way? Ooh, I got to figure that out. I'll figure that out. All right. Uh, all right, what about the rest of you? Where do you think you are when this, um, like, I mean, think about it. You've been a l- yeah. cast away for eight years and all of a sudden two ships appear in the atmosphere. Uh, I think I'm like, Pug is like repairing a fence or something. Like he's like driving a fence post like into the ground, like trying to fix like a corral. Cool. Mm. You yeah, just look and you look. Sorry, go ahead. Our Arthur is probably doing that with him because it's like we got to get everything locked down and ready for the the rains coming in. So there is the let's get everything secure. So yeah. we're like, uh, we're, I'm like we're holding a post the... as you're smacking it in with your fist. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> like boom, boom. Yeah, <laughs> his, his fur is now you just go shirtless all the time, and that those furry pants <laughs> oh just ripping. Oh my god, he's so strong now. He's so proud. You, 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 you can't see him, but I swear they're there. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, all right, Swan, you gained and lost a bestie in the past eight years, but you're still responsible for food and it is the harvest time. Yeah. What do you think you're up to? Yeah, so Swan, like Arthur, is sort of battening down the hatches and preparing the, um, the crops that they've cultivated that were almost destroyed, but, you know, Arthur did a good job saving them. She's getting them ready for harvesting what they need for to get them through through the season and she's sort of just testing some things out and she looks up and sees and here's this plane crash and she just stands up like and drops everything to the ground and it's like I don't want to go in that forest again however <laughs> there are two planes that just crashed that's all <laughs> but then in the back of her head she's thinking I do have to go back in that forest again you don't want to encounter the uh, the sentient creature I tried to feed to my friend I don't know if it's sentient I don't know what it is <laughs> Be a um, cactus. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, what happens next? So, okay, she stands up and, and she sort of screams for uh, Pug or Arthur, and, and it's like, you- <laughs> "Kid, I swear." <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Did you guys see that? There are oh. two planes that just crashed. So one of them looked like it was breaking up, and the other looked like it was sticking together. Yeah. So when I say breaking up, it like it it was dismantling. It's not like it just like broke up on me. It, but it like it it separated in the sky, (laughs) like as as it was coming down. So it's yeah, and that one see it crashed farther away. Um, This I should say this is all to the south of you. So they came overhead. So this would be down the pass with the waterfall down. Okay. Below. That cliff, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, we need a. Oh, well, we need we need to check on that. There could be survivors or supplies. Uh, yeah. But how yeah, how far is... away? Just did that look like that happened, Matthew? Like up in the air or down? How far away was the crash? Where it looked like it was coming down. Yeah. So the crash. Uh, so the the one that broke, again, not broke up, but like separated. Um. From what you observed, you would guess that the bulk of that ship crashed quite a ways away. Um, and the, the other one, the one that seemed that was keeping it together, uh, it went kind of down past the waterfall and seemed like you would, based on, you didn't see, but when you heard it hit the ground, you would have guessed somewhere in the forested area, you think you'd be able to hike there. Some cl- You'd have to climb down the waterfall, but, you know. Further than five kilometers? Yes, further than five kilometers. Okay. I can say that with an absolute certainty because that is, I know, five kilometers is a distance I know in my head because I used to run 5Ks. <laughs> okay. And I will, I will have to up the range on a life detection side. Okay. Because it's like five oh. kilometers, then it's like the next thing goes up to 500. So it's like, so do well, that's like and, a big jump. Uh, and we, are, we all know that you can do this by this point. 
who shared this at this, this with point us. he's probably told because like it, I, i'm pretty sure that arthur has kind of accepted yeah that it, it doesn't matter anymore that yeah the fact yeah. that he's had to be like this for you know so long so yeah and i think like m- maybe he would first of all the odds that we'd ever even get back to civilizations or would not be good and then you might come to trust us that even if we did get reintegrated that we wouldn't turn you in uh, also i have absolutely nothing to sonically talk to because somebody right. failed to save my salamander <laughs> <laughs> hey man that's on me but that, I, but that, really but that cat that keeps crapping in our in our food beds <laughs> yeah it somehow lived yeah. <laughs> well, so when willadine left she left her asshole cat behind <laughs> no that's the thing. We don't know where Willadie is, but somehow that cat still keeps showing up and crapping in our food beds. She's going to steal food and shit in your stores. As a whole planet. <laughs> Go anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> that's really why Willadie left to get away with the cat. Get away from yeah, the that's cat. right. Oh, that was her, yeah. So yep. effect of three on a, on a life detection boosted to very distant range of six to 500 kilometers. Okay, so you succeeded with an effect of three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, 500 kilometers. Okay. Uh, wow. you did, de- you det- at 500 kilometers, you detect, uh, five, five, ad- five life forms that feel sentient. That's uh, okay. They okay. are not all um, together. Okay. It's, if, does so, it, it does it give you location or like a, a general sense of where they are? Uh, let's see. Presence of minds, number of minds, uh, page 230, by the way. Thank you. Uh, and approximate location. Okay. So yeah. I could, I tell if they're intelligent beings, a kind of approximate location. So if they're shielded, as in they're psionic, they, they're naturally shielded. So like, I won't, I won't have that. Uh, yeah, so you wouldn't be able to t- detect any other scions. Yeah, shielded mines are undetectable, and at, at, at shielded mines are all telepaths, uh, unless okay. they unless they let you. Um, so he has probably also been doing this to at least keep mental track of like uh, just over the years of where Plurn and Willidine have been. Just yeah, well that's sweet. Really, we're gonna hide. Nobody knows they're up there. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say it's sweet, also a little creepy, but mostly yeah. sweet. <laughs> I mean, um, it's not thinking super about her Canadian intrusive. boyfriend again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the term that caused her to leave at the first place. <laughs> I know, it's like we really should have should have laid off that joke, I guess. <laughs> be here. And cut it out later. Um, okay, I will. So yeah, with that, you detect five five mines. Um, they are. Actually, I took. I was take. I take it back. They are all in the same location. I will also give you with an effect of three. I'll give you that two of them feel like they're slipping away from life. If that makes okay. sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like that. Mm. It's it's dimming. Yeah. That that, that bright. Okay. I'm I'm gonna relay that and say, you know, let's. Let's let's go. If nothing else, survivors, supplies, yeah, weapons, just in case. We don't know. It may be yeah. Oh yeah, like, we ran out of bullets. God knows how long ago. <laughs> you, I, oh I was. So you, there were some, there were some energy weapons. Obviously, you don't have power, but I'll let you. We can figure out a way to. to I got my my windmill set up out of out of, yeah, out of things. Charge, it's just you can charge your batteries. Um, yeah. But wait, I'm talking and about ammunition, though. Like, I mean, are we out there shooting things? Why don't we have any bullets left? <laughs> you had to hunt. You would have yeah. had to hunt, possibly. Yeah. And defend yourselves. I had yourselves. a ton of ammo. I had a, I had a ton. Other than seeds, the captain was also shipping the exact ammunition you need. Just, right. <laughs> just happened. It just happened to be containers of it. <laughs> Turns out the captain was a little bit of a prepper, like a space prepper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, Willa Dean, what do you do? When I see the ships? Yeah. Um, I mount Trigger, who I named. Oh. <laughs> I named my my guy on Trigger. Um, Cute. Yeah, Willadine maybe has gone insane up in the woods, but uh, she mounts Trigger, and she says, "Yeah, 
and then she races down <laughs> the mountain. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Cat running behind her. <laughs> Get out of here! Leave me alone! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she is also headed in the direction of the ship. She's, like, kind of following, you know, the smoke trail of where it went down uh, and impacted, and she plans on a- leaving her camp, abandoning her camp. She's just like, this is now my my focus. So she's racing towards it with whatever supplies she carried with her. You'd have to go through the settlement to get down the waterfall anyway so you're gonna have to you'd have to run into all of your old friends oh she knows God. she knows but i think the excitement of everything she's like this is great like we're all gonna get off the planet or you know figure it out like this is the most monumentous thing that has happened uh all right. that shit means they might have toothpaste and that's probably oh. the biggest motivator for all of us <laughs> yeah well, also, I mean, there's a possibility because this is a mem- momentous. This is huge. Like for huge. all of us, like just, yeah. just imagine what this is and carrying the Gilligan's Island metaphor. It could be the Globetrotters, which is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yes, or a working you jump think- drive or the jump or the Globetrotters. Either way, yeah, yeah. Either way, <laughs> think, either way, you we're think winning. The American Harlem Globetrotters Globetrotter. might be on That's this right, like- ship. Thinking about uh, sports yeah, they, right now. It's a big tour. <laughs> what were the circuit? odds that they showed up on Gilligan's Island? Almost zero. <laughs> you know what? So, That's a no. You make I, a great point. I'll shut I, my I, mouth. They used to solve crimes with Scooby Doo. That's that's true too. I forgot about that when they were yeah, in the animated also, show. They also beat my middle school teachers in uh, an exhibition match. <gasps> Where did you go to school? Why why is your teachers playing the Globetrotters? It was like an event. They like they had to. Oh no! I'm sorry. It wasn't the Globetrotters. Oh, Ow. Let's revisit this another time. I have to go okay. back into my memory. <laughs> <Ow. laughs> um, Your school lied to you. <laughs> did they lie to me? I went to the Washington Generals Academy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They, just, they, they trained in our school. <laughs> they um, beat my teachers regularly. In fact. <laughs> um, okay. So I just imagine Willadine, after like six or seven years like of no contact, just riding into camp on this Cayenne, which has also got to be a little bit of a, like a momentous occasion for you all yeah uh it's been eight years she probably Black doesn't look like on. anyone we know yeah. it's like the french I think, woman oh, she's back from cigarettes <laughs> i think she rides in she rides in and she we, does like the cool the cool dismount where she like just swings her leg over and then like swiftly gets off as the cayenne is still running you know and she like stumbles and runs um and she goes <sighs> i'm sorry i've been gone but i'm back and we need to get over to those ships right now. All you hear is, and there's a gun pointed like right at your forehead. No! Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Willa Jean slowly turns Why do you around. you have a panda as your head? Yeah. Stop right there. The yeah. gun is right there. She turns. She it's just like goes. this. She, <laughs> ow. She just goes, Swan, it's me. Me? Wait, you're all like crazy looking, right? I'm assuming. <laughs> I am crazy looking. The beard is fake. <laughs> <laughs> your voice sounds familiar. And she's like, she puts her gun up. Captain? And Willa Dean salutes. I apologize for my absence. I, um, I needed some time. But we have to go. Eight? We have to. Eight years? It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't eight years? Was oh, it? It was four years. Well, four years. It was, it was four. But also, Willa Dean's four like. Years. Two to four was it? years. Was it, like four. it could be like four. It could be. Actually, it was probably four to six. Honestly. Was it eight? Mm. Was it eight? Oh my. I really was not keeping count the way I thought I was. <laughs> we'll go over this another time. Yeah. It's good to oh, see you, well, Swan. It's good to see all Arthur's of you. Arthur's tail is at least wagging. <laughs> she actually she gives them a big group hug she just goes I'm yeah. sorry I'm sorry you still wearing like the like your torn captain's uniform yes. <laughs> and she even it's all like pinned, ripped and tattered yeah, she pinned like, back off. on her insignia she like kept them and pinned them back on they look like shit where's her Marley is like Marley, you see Marley doing like he's like riding uh riding his cayenne like over some post fence post that he's he's erected. Like Hi Captain Marley Marley, you're <laughs> so 
big. Oh. I don't know why I remember you as an eight-year-old child, but you've grown so much. He's, like, he's like, looks he's like pug. 40. His name is Marley. <laughs> yeah, like no. <laughs> oh, Marley. Oh, man. Well, that's a good way to remember it. Marley is 34. We'll Christmas girl. He's like a oh. baby. Oh, pug. And Willie yeah. gives pug a big hug. Hey, remember me, don't you, Captain? Of course I do, Puck. Of course. I well, well, we're standing around. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. I'm not getting any younger. In fact, well, I'm that's... old. <laughs> yeah, we're I'm like old. the Crypt Keeper. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, come oh, no. on. How old are you, actually? Yeah, how old are you all? <laughs> for, yeah, we're not running anywhere. <laughs> 46. <laughs> I'm so young. Oh, I'm so, so four young. years younger than me in real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible fate. Well, I mean, here's uh, the thing. If this ship was coming to save us, it doesn't bode well if it crashed. We we need to help if there's any survivors. Oh. We need to also scavenge for parts. Yeah, Arthur, what's, uh, what's probably, say you? Yeah. Probably like everybody get the get the spears because you know there are the spears, and I have my you know, that type of thing. And let's 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 go. Let's as he kind of keeps looking around. Like is, is Blurn out there? Is she, she's showing up too, riding in on a big beautiful is, bird. Plurin says, oh. Plurin comes up to oh. you and is like, Oh, no, she's back. Yeah. Lord. Yeah, yeah. We're back together so, again. Going off on more adventures with your humans, huh? Uh, yeah, there really are the only other people here. <laughs> I just thought maybe you'd like to stay home for once. There's, there's a ship with supplies and survivors. Shh. And you get, and she like looks in your eyes intently. She twitch, and her her ears go. We, 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 we should we should we should go get the supplies of the survivors. Yeah, we yeah, of course, of course. Go save more, probably humans. Go on. Eight years, and now she's in the mood. Now, she turns and she's just like she like she she starts to walk away, and then she looks back, and then walks away. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> just, what is going on? This is so bad. Burgess, he's get her hot. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like this is just. I don't know. Man. Everyone's acting <laughs> crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Dean, after being gone for literally years, like, everyone's acting so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Why is everyone being weird? <laughs> You're the one wearing your cap sideways with a shirt yeah. ripped okay. off. And oh, and I, can, I oh. understand why you left. I mean, this, she helps this you is weird. This <laughs> one's weird. No, I, I didn't leave because it was weird, Pug. I, I left. I'm sorry. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the pressure of keeping everybody safe, and I don't know. I'm, I don't feel fit to call myself your captain, but I don't know what else I am in this world. But you're well, still I was, a captain. You're still captain. Oh, Swan. If I knew how to read, I would have read your book while I was gone. But I'm mostly just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mostly just. Tore you the pages it, you out. Weird. You made it weird. <laughs> I mostly t- tore the pages out and made little flowers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very, this is a very Brooklyn you know moment, but you you're just being around other people who write you books. You're like, oh, you, oh, you've been gone for eight years. Did you read my book in that time? <laughs> Did you read? Oh, oh, uh, it's on my list. I, I, I said I was, yeah. Phew. Oh, um, eight years? Huh? Didn't read it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mostly tore the pages out and made uh, flowers for my, my hut, but the I, the flowers are mostly you crumple the paper up, you squish okay, it up, right. yeah. and you find a stick, and you put it on the stick. So I have a lot of those. If we go back up, I could show you them. Okay, and uh, okay. this is this is Trigger. Uh, this is Trigger, my, um, my <laughs> mount, and my best friend. All right. Roll out! And I get uh, on boy, trigger. I want to stop. I don't mind, everyone. A lot of things have happened since you were gone, Captain. Of course, of course, of course. I get back off trigger. Just a few uh, things. Arthur's like busy grabbing the spears and his little bed bag that he's made. With like the bandages and splits. He's like, are we, are we going? 
Uh, hold on. Go. Hold on. Swan has something to say. I think it's important for all of us to hear each other out. Gonna, if you guys are going to take a while, there's something I could, I could do real fast. But uh, <laughs> 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 well, we've That'd got okay at home. I think need to go right now so I can get back quicker. Or <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need point. like three what minutes. <laughs> Ten minutes? Five? We have Less two minutes. That? Is that enough? It's a difficult thing to sort of... Because as the problem, judge. if it's not, we're gonna be we're gonna be locked, and it, that's we don't have a water house. So well, but like we've we're seeing this per- our captain who <laughs> abandoned us yeah. for seven years ago. We're seeing for the first time. We're saying, and you know, we're seeing other human beings for the first time in almost yeah. that long. Deeply so undecided. judging kind of like what the balance is between resolving yeah what what's going on with the captain versus like getting down there right now. That's. I think yeah. I, I think I'm being silly, but I think Willadine really does come back and and profusely apologizes and om- maybe almost like tears up a little bit. While yeah, Scott we kind of used to hear strong. Captain, you know, like I, I think like Pug, would, there's some hurt feelings there for like Pug, you know. Mm. Uh, so that I think maybe. the way that the way that Willadine will leave it until we can like resolve it further as a group, she says, I don't deserve your respect after what I did, but I'm hoping I can earn it back and earn a place back in your group, back as your captain, and um, as your friend. Mm. Alright. You're on probation. <laughs> and Willadine smiles a little bit. <laughs> Unders- and, understood. And I'm gonna get my shotgun. Yeah, you can use your weapons, like whatever yeah. weapons you had, we'll say. We'll find, yeah. find a way to, I don't want to make torture you. Um, all right, so Marley and Plurn and Trey uh, volunteer to stay behind and guard the settlement and keep working on the, the, the harvest. You know, like you've got, that's the sh- storm season's still coming. Uh, conveniently, they're also the NPCs I won't have to control. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, they've got, they've got the horn. To blow, and the you horn. know, with my Varga yeah. ear. Yes, of course. Uh-huh. You know, the the horn, the emergency. Something's going out of camp, or the thing. You know, the yeah. horn of Helm ha- Hammerhand, or whatever. Oh, yeah, and, Helm Hammerhand. <laughs> okay. Which, what did, did we I, name well, we this planet? Radios. By the way, did we, we name have this planet? To have... <laughs> Does this planet have a name? Uh, it didn't exist on the star chart, so, so we would have named it. Yeah, well, we should. Ooh, we what can do we think work. about this. I, we right. don't have to say this now. We can get on with this. No, part. I but, think like, we this should is something all. We probably would have named it. We should all go in a circle, and everyone says a single letter, and by the end of it, we have come <laughs> up with the name. <laughs> oh my god, all right. that's a great idea. Plurn uh, swishes her tail at Arthur. Marley rides off on on his Cayenne to go uh, wrangle some r- r- crops, and Trey organizes them, and then you guys all set out. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Um, yeah, so you're following the river south easterly, and eventually you come to the foothills of the mountain that over the past eight years has been your constant companion, your protection, your home in the case of Willadine, prison also maybe. Uh, and so you're walking along the river and the shoreline starts to narrow and then pretty much disappears altogether. And you can kind of scamper part of the way up the slope for a bit, but eventually the rock face is going to turn more vertical and you'll need to do some light climbing to get up about two or three meters to like a kind of walkable ridge. So you're probably going to have to leave Trigger behind, Willadine. At least for now. How dare you? I just got this Build an embankment. (laughs) Fine. (laughs) How dare you? Fine. But I tie Trigger up very safely and securely. Trigger can't get away if a centipede attacks. I tie Trigger up with a... something happens to all of us, we'll just starve. I tie Trigger up with a breakaway leash, (laughs) not design, that I designed. Uh, so it's she's like, not tied up at all. What? She, uh, she knows. She knows. And I give her her collar, which has her name on it, that I uh, crudely... How did you, get, how did you do oh. that? Crudely you engraved. You got it engraved. Crudely, crudely engraved. Oh, it says, there. I couldn't fit everything. The front says Trig and the back says Gur. Uh, and I kiss her on the head. Despite I noticed that her with- collar is made from four pages of my book. <laughs> I cut out the letters. Trigger is spelled wrong, and it's like pasted together. Oh gosh, it's like a ransom note. <laughs> it looks like a ransom note. I will say. Swan scowls. <laughs> <laughs> That's my book. 
<laughs> Despite right. what happened with Washu, I am not the kind of GM who uh, delights in destroying animal companions. So feel reasonably safe. Okay. We'll be all right. All right. So I need an I need an average athletics check to to kind of get up along the mountain along the river. Okay. From all of us. Yeah. Can we can we task chain this to help each other through it? Uh, sure. Like if you want to fight, like if maybe Pug is like, yeah, you, know, you get he gets up and then pulls you up if you want if you want to do it that way maybe. You could also that, you, or he can he can boost uh, whichever way Pug wants to do it. Great. All right. So let me do. So why don't we do a task chain? Who has the best athletics? I have a two in my dex and a one in my athletics. So, so yeah, I'll let you roll athletics dexterity if you're trying to like scamper up along. Um, Skid, what's your what's your athletics? Uh, I have a I have a zero, but I have a three in my strength. All right, so maybe we'll let, you can use your strength to to modify the roll, and then let's maybe we'll do we'll task chain it so Willa Dean ends up. Um, making the final roll. All right, so let me, so everybody roll, and then in whatever order you want to, call them out, and then Will Dean, you'll do the last roll. So we have to use strength, we can't use dexterity, because- You like, can use dex. Dex, okay. Being extra nimble. Uh, Pug got an 11. All right, so that is uh, a success. That gives you a plus two, I'll just call it an order. Alicia, go ahead. All right, we'll see. Including the plus two I just gave you? Oh no, then make it a nine. All right, you that's a success. That's a plus two to Arthur. Um, yeah, a four. <clears throat> that is a fail. Uh, I'm thinking of a plurn. <laughs> Eight oh. years. No. Uh, <laughs> today of all days. <laughs> For eight years. Um, I did think you were. I, th- I thought it was gonna be a story that we were gonna have a whole litter of 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 Varger puppies around that we were, I was gonna Aww. have to. I was gonna have to deal with. Um, I wish. Un- unfortunately, that is a minus two to your role, Sydney. Oh, uh, no. I I got an eleven total, so that'll be a nine. All right, you are as enough with the captain's leadership. The return to the the uh, the prodigal captain's leadership. You're able to kind of scamper up along the ridge there. Um, okay, so you hike along, and eventually the river just kind of just drops away into this actually rather beautiful waterfall. Uh, and you'd estimate maybe 50 or 60 meters down, and you look out across this vista, and down, uh, down below is this even more verdant green fields that roll into a deciduous forest. And that forest is where you see a plume of smoke licking up into the sky. And that is where we'll take our break for our first ad. We'll see you in just a second. Say, <laughs> Michael brings out his holy sword. Places his heel upon the neck of the serpent. For now, the hour is struck. The trumpet has been sounded. The dead shall walk again. The serpent comes, but upon all of them he shall place the mark of the beast. Okay. So you are looking down over this grand waterfall, again, like 50 or 60 meters tall to the ground, and you have to figure out a way to get down. Maybe you already have. Maybe it's in the past, in the past eight years, some or one of you might have explored this way. Um, so we can go about this a couple different ways. So uh, I, what I wanted to start with, though, is a luck roll from each of you. Luck. Uh-oh. One, one D. One point that I, I forgot to make, because I thought about this for the show, but then I forgot. My jumpsuit that I bought had nano clean, so it it's still clean. Oh, so it's wow. spotless I, after eight years I have of an, I, have a, I have an armored jumpsuit that I paid the extra to so it molecularly cleans itself. So everybody else is in drags, so and I'm like, it's my nice jumpsuit that I rip off at every certain <laughs> thing. But 
The one time I could prove that I got stronger, I failed my climb check. But, you know, <laughs> at least my jumpsuit's clean. On that same note, Seth, I do want to say my vac suit had extended life support and it was self-sealing. So mm-hmm. mayhaps my suit is in a horrible condition if I saved it, you know, for a moment, like thinking we would eventually get off the planet. Uh, maybe it's we'll, sealed we'll its holes. Out if that becomes important. Okay. Okay. Just letting okay. you know. But I do think hey, that... Luck. I think at some point we would have gone down here just out yeah. of, you know, exploration, exploration, yeah. just like mm-hmm. seeing anything like because we never found anything like signs of civilization around us. So, like, I think we would have gone as far afield as we could. have. Oh, yeah, we're probably also looking for edible food, especially and, yeah. And yeah. food. Yeah, especially yeah. early on, mm-hmm. especially yeah. considering Swan's food allergies. So it's like maybe the yeah. berries at the bottom of the hill don't make her swell up. Let's check yeah. those. <laughs> um. um I, I, rolled a, I, I rolled so. a nine on a luck. A nine. Oh. oh, 2D for the luck roll? 2D plus your luck modifier. Oh, okay. Eight, eight, Matthew. Eight. Sydney. I rolled boxcars. Oh, lucky, okay. lucky. Nice. Twelve. I have a zero in luck, so 12. And what did you get, Alicia? I'm an eight. Okay. So I want to say, like, here's how we'll play this. So with your roll, this was just a, a way to determine what happened. Uh, Swan, Arthur, Pug, you've thought about coming down the waterfall before, but it just seemed like it's just like just seemed like a sheer drop for too long, and you ultimately decided not worth the risk. However, Willa Dean, in your isolation, you got restless, and you came down here and uh, with it, and you were planning on uh, like just rappelling down the side of the waterfall, but with your boxcars, you actually discovered that there is a secret path that was bl- that was blocked by fallen rubble that you could get, you think you now with a group of people, you'd be able to clear. So you never got all the way down, but you did find a kind of secret switchback path along in, the, in, in like in, in tucked into the mountain base. Ah. Ooh. So I Someone tell the- Someone added a high board. I, <laughs> I know, we could have been doing this the whole time. I tell the group, um, I saw this a while ago, but uh, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to move all these stones, but maybe if we all, if we all pull this out right now, I think I'm pretty sure this is a this is like a tunnel that we could get through this. I, I do you know if it's if it's safe or stable? I mean, it's safer than jumping off the edge of a waterfall. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, well, let's. Oh, let's get to work. Let's, all right. Let's so yeah, do you, it. I'm gonna start moving. Way, you make your way down, and it is like it's walkable. It's like a fully walkable path. You just oh, you know it was okay. it was you, you never. Great. Uh, and Willadine shows you the way, and then you do get to the kind of blocked, a uh, kind of caved-in tunnel. But it's not like not boulders; it's pretty like handheld, hand-sized rocks. You think if you spend, you know, a good thirty minutes to an hour, you might be able, to, you'll be able to clear it, so you can walk through. Yeah. Okay. okay. That actually was a. I was, this is a huge your, development too. Like we have you, a way down you, this you, waterfall after eight your years. Your spear shaft is a lever. You're, you really want to make these spears work. Yeah, you really, you really like right? these okay. spears. You have a this gun. is also Arthur's point of view. Because he, he stayed home. He actually, because of his rank, he got leadership one. No one has ever listened to him in his life. And then Lily comes back and she's taking charge again. It's like, no, I'm strong now. I'm a leader now. No, I do leader. stuff. I'm so I, <laughs> so oh, I feel bad. I, if, if he had asked for roles, like, he's going to do it first. <laughs> <laughs> I like, oh, I'm like, she do the I, way down. I think there's a path. And then you're like, there, there is a path. There is a path, actually. Go down there. You all go down there. Let me go clean I, it with my spear. I got leadership as well. I didn't say anything, but Oh and sorry, what was your I, what was did. your leadership? We all did. What, what was your what was your leadership, Arthur? What was it? Are you holding up one? Oh, Willa yeah. Dean's is what's this? Oh, oh wow. Two. Oh, two. Oh, well <laughs> Because two. I had people to help. There was <laughs> For the audio only listen the audience. <laughs> Seth and Sydney are now flashing single middle fingers at each <laughs> Seth one and Sydney two. Oh uh, um, we're having fun. This fun. is this is how we bond. This is That's right. This is the rapport um, you develop over eight years. Later, we're gonna get drunk together. And be like, I missed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh. Uh, you mean, yeah, before that, before that eight years, eight years, you did spend four years basically alone with each other already. So yeah. That's true. Um, all right, so yeah, you take it takes some time, but you're able to clear it without a real, uh, you know, real test. 
and you get down to the ground and you start to hike towards the tree line. You can see that smoke plume acting as, as a kind of beacon for you all. Uh, and pretty soon, you don't really notice when it exactly happens, but you're fully into the forest. Um, oh, and there's no. no path, really. You're bushwhacking. Um, but after all that time at a higher altitude, maybe you actually feel kind of spry. So you're making yeah. make good progress. Okay. Um, I, we all we, we had to deal with the kind of the, the the obvious kind of destabilizing moment of your captain coming back after being gone for so long. But what are you all thinking about in terms of this crash? Like you know from Arthur that there are at least some survivors. Are you, well, like, what's going okay. through your minds? I'm sorry, Arthur. You have a thermo scope, a thermo like, or do you have a holographic scope? What do you have again that you were able to determine that there's heat? Uh, um. <clears throat> There's a reason I win at cards. Uh, yeah, at this point, I would have I would have said that I I have psionics that I was trained at the institute. Yeah, he sure did. Like, His psionics were spotty before, weren't they? I, I didn't want to bring not, that up. I know it's just they're not, they're not terrible, but they're also not good. Not like good. I have a psi of six, which means I don't have a minus, but it's just a six. It's a really mediocre psion. And one. then my telepathy is one. It's the only one that I don't have a zero in. So it's like, hmm. it's better than I can cheat at have, cards. So. <laughs> well, that's so like <laughs> Arthur. Arthur's like the most interesting situation here because you're the one guy who might have the most to lose going back into civilization if it happened, right? It's true. It, it is. But, you know, you guys are also my pack. And. Mm. At the, at, they probably assume I'm dead at this point since like the ship never checked in so it is like actual freedom because he doesn't have to keep checking with his parole officer mm-hmm. that is like hey you're not uh, you're not you're not leaking anything about the Imperium Sonic program no but because that was his technically his only friend was his parole officer who would write long letters to <laughs> like, all of them from or, away well not parole um, officer but whoever it was that always checks on him like Oh yeah, today we did this, dear diary. Yeah. <laughs> are you? Are you, the rest of you? I assume want to get back to civilization, right? Like if you, yes. that was a. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this yeah. has got to be I mean, incredibly exciting. Yeah. The possibility yeah. of getting back. I mean, we all have like foods that we miss. Uh, just wondering what movies came out in the last eight years. <laughs> uh, you know, not to mention our families and friends. I guess yeah. them. Them too. Yeah. Yeah. This is a lot, thought, and also I like thought, I mean, we thought the, thought we thought we the captain fans. was dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> all these and thoughts it could are be the Globe Trotters. So that's yeah. a, again what I'm most wasn't. excited about. Uh, um, yes, it could still be the Globe Trotters. Well, anyway, all of these thoughts are flying through your heads as you're walking, <laughs> and maybe even like the, at first you're talking and and catching up with Willadine, but eventually you all kind of fall silent. Maybe and just like that way it happens when you're hiking, like you talk, 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 and all of a sudden. And people get a little tired or a little winded and you're, everyone's just kind of working. Um, but give me, it's been about two hours now. Um, at this point you can even see this, you can't even see the smoke through the forest canopy. So you're just kind of working out, you know, yeah, I'm sure you have compasses, uh, working there, your way there. But uh, everyone give me a recon roll. Oh. Ooh. And this is off of, is this intellect or education? Can you do? I mean, it's... It's up to you. You can make the argument. I, I, I'm open to whatever argument you'd prefer. Uh, I want to use my knowledge, uh, learned knowledge of the environment to Great. use my education. I only got a six. Right. Um, eight. Eight. Uh, I, got a, I got a 12. 12. Oh. Okay. And Arthur? 16. 16. I got a box cars. I have a two intellect. I have a one recon and I get a plus one as a varger if it's like smell or hearing. So either 15 or 16, depending on what I use to detect. That is an exceptional success. Uh, Okay. So there. Keep pointing. Pug, you. Yeah, you're exactly. (laughs) Pug, you get the feeling you're being followed. Oh. Arthur, you hear. Like you're like your 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 Varger ears perk up, and you hear, kind of like not close, like not right behind you, but in the distance you hear some, you hear footsteps on the forest floor. He's trying to be very very quiet. Coming from the way we came. Yeah. Uh, it, it, like, bipedal 
or like animal like you'd be humped by a space panther like is it trigger you, you it would be shod feet and not like okay. you, you don't have oh, to shoe oh. the cayenne okay uh yeah to, are you uh, saying they're uh, wearing no. shoes matthew is are you, t- are you do you say the person is wearing shoes yes Checking that's what you were saying. Because that's what the Carlin Globetrotters wear. (laughs) That's right. I do (laughs) use them. Yeah, does it sound... The retro Jordan high? Yeah. Does it sound at all like... Squeak, 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 squeak. (laughs) Yes, it does. It's Curiously, it does sound like that. No, Hmm. no, I'm pretty sure, like, Pug and I are looking at each other like... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, we have... Yeah, especially, like, just knowing each other for this long under these circumstances we probably have a whole unspoken vocabulary plus he's psychic uh, and he's psychic to boot so yeah uh, so do we want to just how, how far away is like is it is it gaining on us quickly Matthew I mean we're, we're talking like they're not gaining actually like that's they're kind of just kind of maintaining their distance and you would say I mean like we're talking like hundreds of meters Okay. Really, like it's really far. It's far away, but you you were especially attuned to the ways of the forest, perhaps. Okay. Uh, do we want to just to hide and let it catch up, and then be you all know, like, tell us where the Washington Generals are, or yeah, you know, do we want to like, <laughs> <laughs> do we want to like circle like around and hunt the case? hunter? I mean, well, I figured we could just like we could just hide and be all like, well, let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah, we could just ambush them. All right. Yeah, I think we should hide. Yeah. Get up in the trees. I think I think we yeah. all do that thing where we so, like you said we stop talking and we all are like space space out space out get up in the trees. All right, everyone, give me a stealth roll. Okay. Uh oh. Okay, my stealth actually is fine. Be stuff of what, too? Matthew? Like what skill? What stat? Usually dex, dex, usually dex, but if you mm-hmm. wanted to make it, like, again, use your education to know how to blend in with this particular oh, fauna. Yeah. Right. yeah. That'll Especially take some we've been out. in the wild for eight years. <laughs> we kind of know how to hide from things. Don't you, you guys have jack of all, a bunch of you have jack of all trades now. Don't I you? do. I have jack of all trades. Why? Oh, yeah. I think, Alicia, you have it too, right? Yes. So you get to reduce your penalty based on your. Okay. Plan. Got it. If you're untrained. So with um, uh, assistance from my Jack OT, I got a total of nine. Nine. Mm-hmm. I got an eleven. Okay. Nine. Arthur. Five. Okay. So you all, I mean, so maybe uh, <laughs> you like climb up a tree or duck behind a fallen log. And Arthur just, just kind of stands in the center. Of the he saw, probably saw a squirrel or something. And just started barking. He barks. Yeah, he goes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> just. Um, Arthur, you don't hear anything after you hide. Like, you don't hear any footsteps getting any closer. Because I stuck my head in the ground like a freaking ostrich. I my butt <laughs> up in the air. Just... Oh my God. Where's Arthur? Where'd he go? <laughs> He's flexing. Where's Arthur? And for, and for like, like minutes, like which feels like an eternity, it's silent. Just It's not silent. It's just like it's quiet. You only hear the sounds of the forest. My tail thumping the tree. <laughs> Alright, grab it. Yes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden a laser blast hits a rock right in front oh. of right in front of Arthur. Roll oh. for initiative. Oh, oh my no. God. no! Initiative! Oh, no. Initiative. We're coming to hell! <laughs> oh no. Well, I know what weapons I have on me and I know why I have them too, so. It's good. <sighs> All right, what do we get? Oh, embarrassing. Uh, it's and it's we pick. Is that what it is? We pick the hey, dex or intellect. Okay. Uh, I got a, an eleven. Okay. Swan, what did you get? Or three. Thir- three for Swan. Thirteen for Arthur. Arthur? Because he's he's on the ground, he can go first. He doesn't have to climb down the tree. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Willa Dean. Eight. Okay. And would anyone like okay. to make a tactics roll? Ooh, I don't uh, have. Oh, I do have that, but only for naval, so probably not. 
So you just roll that roll with no bonus. Or can I use my jack of all trades? Uh, you'd be more you're better even, off better off your, just rolling get, it. You have a zero in general tactics if you have. A one oh, 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 I see. So. Uh, that's a five. Okay, so yeah, no. Can I try? No. I want to try to attack. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, seven. Okay, no effect. Okay, um, all right. Uh, so yeah, Arthur, you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, the, the the first thing I want to do is 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 see where that laser blast came from, came from and also be all like. We mean no harm, it's just like trying to, but I need ID like where they are. Okay. And then I like to try to defuse this situation because I am also probably the worst fighter here. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's uh, 12 difficulty for me to suggest that they surrender to us, but you, I need to see where they are. <laughs> can you use your, your, your psychic thing to pinpoint where they are? I, I, I could, or you just but I can probably follow around. the path of the laser. That's true. That's true. So, um, yeah, the laser came from directly the way that you came from, behind you. Um, but as you you know they're pretty distant, right? Like, we're talking, like, at least 100 meters, maybe more. Ah, so I'm just going to start just yelling, but it's like, like, like you, wait, wait, like, we're, we're coming here to, to, to help. Okay. We're not um, hostile. Holding my spear. <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty spear. All right, uh, Pug. Don't knock it. Um, <laughs> Pug is. I'm. I'm gonna take cover. Okay. And I'm gonna try to. Can I do a recon check to try to spot? This? Absolutely. Uh, seven. Uh, you you know generally the laser blast came from the direction you came, but you oh, don't wait, see it. Okay. Okay. Um. So. Yeah. Um. Just I'm also yeah. Just gonna sh- shout out. Just show yourself. Show yourself. Okay. Uh. All right. And then. Okay, uh, are you still hiding, Pug? Yeah, you you, you, you hid pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Please would hear my voice. Okay, Arthur, a laser blast, another laser blast comes in and clips you on the shoulder. Oh. Ooh. Son of a bitch. <laughs> How bad? <laughs> uh, let's find out. I gotta roll, okay. Okay. Boy. Oh boy. This is potentially not great. Uh, that'll be four points of damage. Oh. Ar- armor takes it. Oh, okay. nice. I rolled. I rolled My very bad. Very poorly. Stuff. Stuff. Armor. That's okay. Bright, bright, bright orange or whatever. Oh. Why they? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Willadine, you are up. Uh, yeah. I mean, Willadine also puts on her her fucking captain voice uh, and she yells out this is the crew of the XR 1453L <laughs> previously <laughs> on the warbler sent by Poltec if you do not stop firing I will be forced to use action against you and she wants to see if they do anything okay swan um Swan is, I guess, up in a tree. Because he's learned to scale. <laughs> Go tree. Swan in a tree. Day. That's I've like our everybody. saying. Up, oh, swan's up in a tree. Swan's up in a tree. <laughs> oh, swan's up in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, it, with all the money that Swan had, I mean, so reminding you guys that Swan had a lot of credits that she tried to, you know, spend uh, back back at the other space station. So, one of the things that she did have was this thing called a biomass sighting aid. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, and so I did. I did actually look it up. I have it. I made page 139 of the field catalog. And it says it uses the signature of a target. Thermal signature of a target. Wait. It fills in the outline of targets on its display. 
although it's occasionally spectacularly wrong. A biomass <laughs> citing a. Uh huh. <laughs> Why would they write that? <laughs> Why would they write that? <laughs> you said page one thirty three. Um, uh, it d basically it reduces the dam for cover by two, and it can see through up to 20 centimeters of inorganic material. It's very sophisticated, wow. and it can, it can eliminate a dam due to cover by four points. The sighting aid is can be mounted on a weapon or operated separately. So we have no guns and no ammunition at this point, right? No, no. Are we? You have your okay, no, good. So her, this thing is mounted on her uh, Gauss weapon. All right. What is the range on that sliding in? How far does she need to see, Matthew? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> where would that be? Where would that be? Is that, look at page 139. It should be on the. It should be on the weapons page. What is it? A Gauss uh, rifle or? Oh, oh yeah. okay. So it's wait, it's wait, wait. it's a, it doesn't it's yeah. you use the range of the weapon. Yeah. But it, you can see through. Yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And that, you that's... you don't see a target. Right now, so That's if you were to know a target was there and you could, they were undercover, it would give you, it would be able to let you reduce that. Um, okay. So you could roll recon to try to spot someone. Yeah, because she's trying to look to see if she can figure. Maybe it's a survivor that is scared and is like thinks we're savages or something. Maybe, it, maybe it sees the captain's outfit and is like, wait a minute, I don't know what this thing. You know, if these people are <laughs> gonna eat me, they don't know what they are. Uh, <laughs> this is recon. Yep. <gasps> Two sixes. Okay. Oh. Oh, I have nothing in What else can I use? Education, intellect. Oh, direction, maybe. Jack of you all trades. That's right. I can use plus one there. So then it's Wait. 12. So you have jack of all trades. So let's say you use yeah. intellect. What's your intellect modifier? Uh, zero, so. And then Jack of all trades would reduce that, reduce it to a minus two, so it would be a, a ten. Oh, all right. awesome. really good. It's still really good. You, you, you think you you could narrow it down to like a general area if you wanted to take a shot, a blind shot. That's basically all it would be, but you don't see anyone. Yeah, because she wants to have an aim. Just you know, that's what I was basically what I was trying to do is find an aim. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You wouldn't. You don't. Like, you don't see a target. You can't. You don't. You didn't see a muzzle flash. You didn't see anything. That's, yeah, that's that's all she's pretty much doing and we totally see where this goes. I don't want to shoot something in the dark. I don't know. <laughs> Alrighty, Arthur, you're up. <sighs> okay. Well, since since Arthur is uh, his pleas for whatever is clearly not working, I am going to get for cover. Okay. And try to uh, try to recon where they are, but I ever like. I'm gonna get behind some rocks or a tree or something. Great, because uh, that sucks getting shot. <laughs> it hasn't <laughs> happened in a while for you, I imagine. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, no it's, one's shot at us. It, I, I haven't been shot in at least three years. <laughs> uh, yeah, not since the captain <laughs> left. <laughs> not since the captain left. Have I been shot? <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, the recon is six. By the way. Yeah, you don't. You, you, again, you know, general direction, but you don't see anything. Ears um, are ringing after I get shot. I just. Uh, Pug, you're up. Uh, I'm just. I'm. He's gonna keep scanning the tree line for this person. Uh, doing another recon check. You ever, you ever see um it, like it's that's yeah, I'm sure you've seen it, but the scene in the hurt locker where they're pinned down by the sniper for like hours yeah, and they're just yeah, kind of yeah. like. They're just like sitting there at the scope, just trying to figure out if they ever see it. Yeah. Oh God, so tense. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of the yeah. same th sort of thing happens in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> uh, there we go. That is a 13. Okay. Hug, you catch, and I'm talking like 170, 180 meters away, through the forest, through like full untamed forest. You catch the glint of something white. Like shiny white. Okay. So I'm gonna hand signal to the others, like a distance and a location. And, um, and that's my turn. I, I only have my shotgun. I should have brought my machine gun, which has a scope and much longer range. I don't have uh, yeah, that's that's all I can do. Alrighty. Uh, okay. 
Uh, are you, you were hiding, right? You didn't take cover? Yeah, I was hiding. Okay. So another, another laser blast comes through after you shouted out all that information and hits you like square in the chest. Awesome. <gasps> oh, jeez. Okay, uh, I didn't roll. I, just, just one six on that 4D. Uh, 11 points of damage. Okay, I have plus eight protection. So I take three points. Uh, and sorry, I disperse it throughout or? Endurance first. Endurance first. Yeesh. Okay, well, I have a six now, so that okay. takes me down to a zero. So you take a blast, like, full in the chest, and, like, after trying, after offering, like, words oh. of peace. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of, like, fire erupts, like, gunfire erupts from the trees <laughs> behind you. Like, not oh. shooting at you, but, like, two people are, like, trying to, they're shooting in the direction of the guy shooting, or the person shooting. And it's just like, and then you say like a laser blast, a shotgun blast. People just kind of firing wildly. They just kind of, and then, oh, and, and you guys all are all ducking down, taking cover. And then three figures step out of the, step out of the, the woods behind you, and you hear a voice. It's like, "Were you, uh, you in, uh, in that other ship? You need some help?" And you turn around and you see three human beings standing in the trees behind you. And we'll see you next week. Oh, oh my god. My god. Are they wearing basketball uniforms? Yeah, wait, are they spinning a ball? <laughs> are those Jordan retro? <laughs> no recon check needed. You can confidently assume they're not the whole Harlem Globetrotters. Ah, they're here yeah. somewhere. Oh. They're here somewhere. I know it. I can't believe the Harlem Globetrotters shot at us from the other direction, because if it's not them, it must be the other. Right. <laughs> Rivalry's gone too far. Oh.